Okay. Lawrence Friedman? Present. Jasveer Malik? He's not here. Tomasi Seguirre? Present. Julian Ortnovsky? I'm present. Hilda Torres? Here. Rene Gonzalez? He is absent also. And Justin Heather? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, citizen comments, if there's anyone who would like to make comments, uh, feel free uh, to let us know. But, uh, you know, we don't have, we don't have a sign-in sheet this week, but Ms. Alexander, if you want to make comments, you're more than welcome now or as we discuss items. Thank you. So we'll move on to item number five, discussion items, no action to be taken. Uh, first was uh, just some discussion and feedback regarding the downtown summit. I know many of you attended. I have made copies of the executive summary from the IDA report. Just, uh, you know, this is sort of four pages or so that we're working on distributing the uh, balance of the report right now to, to folks so people can see it. Um, but the idea was uh, much of their focus during the sessions was the importance of the business improvement district to the long term revitalization and sort of reactivation of downtown. Uh, it was really well attended. We had 150, 160 people there throughout the day. Um, the bid presented, uh, Julian and myself presented at the end of the day. And uh, the gentleman from El Paso presented as well. He's the executive director of their bid and uh, was able to provide some you know some real life experience from a very active bid and it's really helpful because we had a lot of audience participation and involvement asking questions and, and having some discussions and some of the positive feedback that i've heard uh, afterwards were that some of the folks who previously were uh, sort of opposed to the concept of a business improvement district have said, okay, now I seem to understand what this is like and, and, and starting to come around to the idea of the importance of the bid for, you know, maintaining safety, security, and cleanliness downtown, maintaining everything that the church and the city does in terms of improvements. They make these capital improvements and then, you know, the, it turns it over to essentially the bid to, to sort of clean up. Since then, had many discussions with folks and uh, uh, just in terms of, you know, feedback and, and talking to them about, you know, what it's going to look like. One of the things you'll notice from this executive summary is, I know in a prior discussion, and we'll get to this next, I, I uh, myself and Amber and a few others uh, discussed a little bit about the bid, and I had said 90 days, and some people kind of looked at me like, oh, wow, 90 days, that's fast, and then you look at this report, and it, was, it seemed like it was even faster um, what they wanted, so... Uh, positive feedback overall, and I think uh, we're sort of moving, moving in the right direction. Uh, I think uh, if you look at this timeline, we're probably going to be very busy over the course of the summer and, and working towards, uh, you know, really activating the bid uh, overall. Any comments, questions, thoughts? No, just my comment was... And just briefly read the executive summary. It's very clear. Um, even if you read the focus, so there's focus, stabilize, and act. Even on the focus and act, you do need um, some assistance. So fully activating the municipal management district is, I think, a key to both of those things. When we're talking about lighting, beautification, maintenance, um, gathering data for informed decision making. Uh, prioritizing efforts of specific key node within the downtown. It's, I, I think it's this report's very clear on that. Great. Justin, if I could. Absolutely. Just a quick, um, we kind of met informally on some of the things that the, the bid could do and what they couldn't do. Um, and I just kind of wanted to let you know with regard to um, procurement, it, this would be considered um, a governmental entity uh, according to the code and so you would have to follow procurement laws um, so you don't have to go out for any type of bids if it's a professional service mm -hmm. but for contracting work you can yes yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely thank you and that is a perfect segue into 5b which is 
a, a group of us met with Amber and others from the city just to talk through the, the bid structure. Um, the Central Laredo Municipal Management District has its own statutory guidelines superimposed on that or you know sort of parallel to that is also the the template standard uh, MMD law with respect to uh, across the, that's applicable across the state for those that don't have their own municipal management district statute we have the I guess uh, benefit of both that specific to Central Laredo as well as the backup so we had a really good conversation with uh, Amber and several others in the in the city just to talk through or sort of how that works and you know I, th I think we're in agreement on 99.99 percent of everything and some of them were like well we might have to look into figure that one out because we're not sure um, so one of the one of the things we did was you know sort of confirm that our prior creation of the downtown bar and nightlife committee was appropriate and, and authorized under the statute we also discussed uh, further appointments to the board. So Rene Gonzalez uh, resigned uh, sometime earlier in May. So we as a board, his term goes through June of next year. So we as a board can nominate a replacement for that role. And uh, we'll, hopefully we'll do that at our next meeting. And that person will serve out the remainder of Mr. Gonzalez's term, which will be next June. There's also two other Go ahead. Just a point of clarification, when you say nominate, does that mean that whoever we nominate instantaneously becomes a board member or does yes. that go to council? Yes. So whoever we put into that, fill that vacancy. So any vacancies on the board, when we as a board vote to say, all right, we're going to fill that vacancy, then that uh, vacancy because of a, re a resignation, well, then that person will serve out the remainder of the replaced person, so they're not vacancy. The other two seats, which are open and haven't been appointed, we as a board will make a recommendation, uh, we'll recommend two people to the city council. We'll then go to city council for approval for an up or down vote. Um, I believe if they don't, they, they can accept one and not the other, and then we come back with another name or something like that until we get that filled. Is that correct? Okay. So I think we had a uh, pretty good discussion. It's, it's really interesting, the sort of interaction between the two, but it does authorize the municipal management district to do a lot. So the, the bid really has a lot of authority. Um, obviously follow the procurement code, we'll follow the, open, the Texas Open Meetings Act and whatnot, but you know, I think uh, we've got a, a lot of ability here to really make a change downtown. And, and now that we have everyone on the, not that everyone wasn't on the same page before, but now that we've sort of discussed it, and everyone's on the same page hopefully we can you know sort of make some things happen over the summer um, one of the things that we talked about was in terms of activating the bid what we're going to do is have a petition that's going to be signed by uh, business uh, or landowners as well as the plan to back that up attached to the petition and you know we'll have folks sign that and say this is these are the services that we want and we'll present those together in one overarching meeting for by for when do you think we'll have something like that in place um i'm hoping by the july meeting that we'll have those we'll have been collecting those signatures and, and be in a position that we can go ahead and notice because at that point we would then notice a hearing mm -hmm. uh i think 30 days within 30 days of, of that date so can i um, motion to combine a and c because i feel like it's bleeding into c which is discussion of possible action authorizing board to hold meetings issue surveys and otherwise solicit feedback for potential scope of financing budget or we can that's that right so you want to combine six a and c um by well are we moving from so this is just discussion items okay so okay well then i'll we'll we'll, just wait for the action we items. can move on to action items okay but you know hopefully by by july we'll be in a position we can start noticing that hearing so we'll move on to six action items um one of the things that we received from the public including miss alexander was discussion of of uh, parking and the need to address parking downtown so uh, 6A is a discussion with possible action on the creation of the Downtown Parking Committee and any other matters incident there too. Based on the feedback and, you know, I think the, the TURS has worked very hard to, make, to work on angled parking and whatnot. I'd like to create a parking committee so that business owners that are part of the Business Improvement District 
parking being one of the specific uh, charges of the bid, uh, that we go ahead and create a parking committee, a downtown parking committee, and then as we move forward and, and we fill out the board and we have more attendees, then we can uh, name anybody to the board that anybody here that wants to volunteer to be on that committee more than welcome to to, to appoint them. But you know, the thought was to create this committee and then start staffing it with anybody that was interested. If I may, um, how is this going to overlap? Um, because I know the city has a parking committee, an advisory parking committee, which currently, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, hasn't hit quorum in I don't know how long. It doesn't meet. It doesn't meet. Oh, it doesn't meet. Yeah. So, how would are we basically trying to since that doesn't meet have this created and hopefully that advisement gets taken to the city since the city's committee isn't meeting it's you know it, these committees parking committees that we talked about in the past i mean this has been going on for quite some time uh when i personally have met with the city also just with our, our little idea of what we want to do up and down on convent from Saragossa all the way to Matamoro Street, having some type of an angled parking. You know, it's not used, and this is between X, X periods from let's say uh, eight o'clock at night till three o'clock in the morning, what have you. This would open up all the rest of a lot of properties out there, giving them the ability to have, have their patrons park you know, close to their buildings out there. And nobody uses, nobody uses, there's, a, there's we have the Frank route, which I call the, your bike route, which is the Frank route. It's not used at night, nobody uses it. So we could basically, in the, the traffic that you have going up and down, that was just one thing. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just talking out loud as far as, as far as the city is concerned. But I think if, if we go back, and we create this committee, we can give them the same ideas that we've talked about, but maybe at that point in time, we can basically get something going here. Like what, what you all were talking about up and, up and down Florida Street, uh, within the, the, the center of the arts, that whole area, I mean, it, it definitely needs the parking. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there's no value in this, I'm just curious on who the city is going to seek advisement on. Well, I, well, I think there's. Amber, a, do you have a, a? If I can. Yes, yes, absolutely. Sure. I believe that if you created this committee, they would report to you guys. Yes. And that you are a local governmental entity. So the funds that you receive from um, the bid, mm -hmm. then you can create projects from it. So I don't think that they would be. If you create any type of committee, mm -hmm. they'll be reporting to you and then you decide what projects you want to take to the city. So I don't think that they would report to the, like, council or anything like that okay. at all. I suppose it's trying to see clarity. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking, you know, like, in terms of parking and how we improve it, like one of the discussions that was had was working with private landowners who own these parking lots that at night, they just chain them up and, mm -hmm. you know, is there a possibility for the bid to step in and be, sort of a landlord overnight for management those, to, to manage those properties, to collect some funds, have a revenue share with the, the landowner so that, you know, the person who owns the parking lot gets some money, but the bid also has a service agreement where it's getting paid some portion of those funds as well. So, you know, whatever that sort of committee comes up with, I just thought, you know, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and create that and get them started. Okay. Yeah, Julian, I, I, I think like um, all our conversations, at least that I've had with, with uh, Gary and company, you know, we have, we, we lease all, all this property from the city as is uh, for our parking there at the outlet mall. And it's, it's a wasted space. So we could utilize that in some fashion. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I think that if we billy up to the bar and we call up Gary and we have a plan of attack there, we have all this parking out there with our little carritos going back and forth in the downtown. Parking right. Yeah, parking right. I, I, I think it'd be a, a great idea. 
do we have to appoint committee members immediately or can we create the committee and then figure out? We can definitely create the committee and if anybody here wants to join the committee, absolutely we can appoint members, but you know, I'd like to at least make the motion to, to create the committee. Okay. okay. I'll second, second that. Mr. Hathaway. Oh, you said I could speak. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I requested that this be put on the, I requested that this, that the intent was to repopulate the actual parking committee that lives under traffic. Even though I've run to traffic lives now under someone else. Um, so there is a parking committee, but um, it, it's not working because it's not in action. It's not populated. And um, to your point, uh, a parking committee here would be different than a parking committee that's connected to the city. And, and my objective here my hope was that the this board could help make that committee start working not not create a new committee i mean you do what you want right mm -hmm. but uh, uh the intent here was there is a parking committee get it working i i can reach all i can do is reach out to you know the council members that i know and ask if they haven't appointed someone if they can them but I agree with you that we should push on that as individuals and that I'm not sure be... if we can direct the city to, to get for that <laughs> yeah but but it, I I agree with the importance of that and and pushing for that and I do think that should be in EDAC agenda item economic development advisory committee agenda item and maybe so, if we form this committee and this committee starts making some recommendations and doing some some tasks or possible and maybe, overlap yes as recommended you know when we build out the committee um making sure when we build up the committee because if i understand correctly every council member is allowed to appoint one individual making sure that those members if if they're selected properly i don't think there would be a conflict if they're the same individuals on both committees um, since they represent two different yes because we do have rules about some committees overlapping and not overlapping, but since this is a separate, yeah, this is very separate. So I, I think that should be, that's why I was hesitant to say to appoint anyone immediately to this committee, but to strategize on how there can possibly be overlap because the city of Laredo's parking committee, there's no parking in the north, it's, it's the downtown, right? So it's direct overlap. Yeah, I, I think by putting more emphasis, it's so important, parking. And if we could possibly make a dent uh, as far as with the city and getting things rolling, I think it'd be very, very important, you know, within our group. Mm -hmm. Everett? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Um, motion carries. Motion carries. There's a parking committee this week? Yes. For the bid? For the bid. For yes. the bid. Yes. That we'll set later. Uh, action. Absolutely. Action item 6B discussion with possible action authorizing board officers to submit or apply for grants and other appropriations without matter specific board authorization and the other matters incident there too. Uh, one of the things the, the um, bid is allowed to do is to seek public funds and to obtain public funds. Sometimes those grant opportunities are very uh, uh, short periods of time in which to respond. Recently we were made aware of one that was only a few days in length. And so the plan here is to authorize the board officers to apply for those grants and then to come back and to, to clarify and to certify those later. Um, with with full board approval, but to make the application as to avoid uh, a situation in which a grant is available, we have to apply before the next board meeting, and we have a short window of time in which that we can convene a board meeting to approve an application. And uh, you know, just this came up recently, so I just wanted to see if the the board was interested and in, and in provided the officers that authority to do so. Okay. 
if applying for a grant doesn't cost us any money, I don't, I don't see why that would be an issue because it's just something that needs to be applied for. So I would motion to authorize board officers to submit or apply for grants and any other appropriations without matter or specific board authorization and any other matter. So long as the application doesn't include monetary commitment? Um, I'll just leave it as that and okay. allow anyone to amend the motion. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion? Couldn't we just do, a, um, well, two things. Can't we just appoint someone to do those applications for us? Like or to a, be like on a, the lookout for those like a grants? grant writer something like that you know we've had we've hired grant writers before to do something and then like we, this, we right? can easily just have a, a special telephone call yeah I, I think once we have a budget and we have some monies i think that's an excellent idea i think right now i mean that if would we be have a grant a writer role if we have a grant writer that does it on what I'll call a contingency, yeah, no, I'm not then saying that. absolutely yeah, fine. Right, if we hire one though, then um, that we would have to pay. <laughs> we don't have right. the money for that right now. But I think if we have the contingency, absolutely. And number two. Well, then the second one was the special telephone call that we could just do to approve it quickly. Oh, okay. To not wait until we meet. Again. Yeah. Is that a, an amendment? Oh, no, no. I oh. was just oh, asking okay. about the. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. A motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no opposition, the motion passes. Uh, Item 6C, discussion with possible action authorizing the board to hold meetings, issue surveys, and otherwise solicit feedback on the potential scope of finance and project improvement plan and any other matters incident thereto. Julie? Yeah. yeah, let me give an update on that. So obviously in that 90 days of you know getting to where we need to be, we do need to solicit um, the feedback from the property owners. I've been working on something called Typeform, which is a really advanced um, uh, surveying um, application where we can send out surveys. We can include like actual URL link, a QR code, and we can send letters. We can also text it to everyone we know because I'm pretty sure everyone here sitting here knows plenty of property owners. Uh, um, it's it's so advanced that I couldn't print it out. <laughs> I, I'm not joking when I say that. There's no option to do that. So the way the whole survey is built out, it, I'm, I'm expecting essentially, if we don't have a face-to-face, -face, there needs to be some form of filtration in this survey. So it accounts for three types of survey takers and according to how they answer, if they are a property owner, a business owner, or just a citizen that wants to give their feedback, Mm -hmm. That's like the first question that's asked. And if they say they are a property owner, it'll immediately go into a line of questioning um, to get their feedback. And at the end of all that, it requires them to put their name and address so that we can confirm that those individuals filling that out, you know, are the survey takers. Because it's very important that we make sure that these, this feedback we're getting is from true property owners. It also accounts for business owners that, and it requires them to give their information if they are business owners within the municipal management boundaries. Um, and then the third option will split off. So we'll be able to see the data based off those three separate individuals. And if I can briefly just give you know a summary um, of the questions, it's how important is the downtown Laredo Business Improvement District to provide cleaning services, you know, zero to 10, and they can select it. Another option, and these are um, both the business and property owners, is to list in order of importance, and for some reason that is not loading at this point, but it'll show um, marketing and promotion, um, downtown parking, 
uh, lighting in downtown Laredo and they can list in order so that we can understand when it comes to putting together a budget, where do we need to put um, the bulks of the monies at work? Is it in lighting? Is it in marketing? Is it in parking? and we can get that feedback from them all. So that's essentially, it, it's a pretty simple survey. This shouldn't take anyone longer than, than eight minutes. Eight minutes? A minute per question. That's long. I know, you'd be surprised at how every minute, how much more of a dropout you get on a survey. So I'm trying to try to collect as much information without it being overwhelming. Um, yeah. I, I did go online and, and just kind of what I essentially, the way I structured this is I looked at the basic services municipal mm -hmm. management districts provide, and I just put it in order of importance. And then what we'll be able to do once we get that feedback is determine, you know, we're gonna put this much into administration, this much to this, and we'll be able to use, you know, these importance, because we don't have unlimited money, because then we would easily put it equally into everything. But I think this is gonna give us some excellent <laughs> feedback from property owners and then business owners in determining what we need. And then what I think is really important for us, you know, and I'll admit this as a property owner, is um, I, I see a lot of people fall into the mistake of thinking I know what's best to attract business. So I really think that third um, section of the survey, which is like the downtown, you know, citizen, and knowing what will attract them downtown is really important. So for that one, I have questions like, and, and I can send you these links and you guys can email me like, hey, I would do this or that and I'll, I'll update this. Um, but for those people, is how often do you visit downtown? What is your overall perception of the downtown? And these are all listed from very positive to very negative. Uh, what are the main reasons you visit downtown? And it's like dining, entertainment, work, events, other, and they can write something out. Um, what prevents you from visiting the downtown? You know, and then it shows lack of parking, safety concerns, limited retail options. They can select them all or some. Uh, how safe do you feel visiting downtown from very safe to very unsafe? Um, what types of businesses or attractions would make you visit downtown more frequently? I think this is very important when it comes to figuring out how we want to market downtown mm -hmm. and what type of business we want to attract downtown because I don't think it's going to help us as a board if we are trying to attract businesses that you know the average citizen doesn't really care about. Um, how how do you travel downtown? It's options: uh, car, public transport, bike, walking, um, and what amenities would would make you visit downtown? Well, I'm sorry. What amenities would make your visit downtown more enjoyable? So it's improved signage and information cleaner streets and public safety, more public uh, seating areas, better lighting. So once this survey really gets out there, I think this is gonna give us a very clear picture of what as a board we should be targeting and when it comes to attracting people and what, you know, because we ultimately serve the property owners, what are they really looking for? And I think those property owners will, it's good for them to see that third part of this, which is, um, the citizens of Laredo that, that visit and don't own or operate a business. But that's my summary on this. The goal of this is so that we can move towards creating our budgets for the service plan so we can get the petitions. Signed. I you think it's great. To that? Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think it's the day three of the educational tour or whatever you want to call it. But the more we get, and I know, thank you for doing all that work on that. I, 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 did, I did a spin through it and then my internet locked up, so I think I got halfway through, so you've got yeah. a business owner or, or whatever with no real feedback. But, mm -hmm. um, oh, it's currently locked up. So I'm gonna okay. send you guys all the links so you can see it, and then I'd appreciate, so this is my goal is, you know, by like Monday, having this thing done so that we can, one, start texting it to the property owners that we already know, mm -hmm. or emailing to the properties that we know, but like I said, we can do a QR code and if I want to say Miriam has a already list of all the addresses, um, maybe as a board, and maybe that's in this motion that we, I'm not sure if we have to approve that, but approve the cost of mailing 
um, letters to all the property owners with that QR code so they can instantly get to the survey. So that's that's a way of making sure for a fact we've at least mailed every property owner. Well, then I'll make a motion uh, authorizing the board to hold meetings, issue surveys, and otherwise solicit feedback on the potential scope of the finance and project improvement plan, including the cost of any mailings necessary for uh, to reach downtown business owners, specifically with respect to the uh, the survey uh, that you've been working on. I'll second that. All right, I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Um, so on the item, just to clarify, do we want to already set a date because the goal is to get this out, and this is something that's churning and making its way, but I still think we have to have the good old-fashioned, and I need to figure out how to turn this into like a paper survey, um, but do a day where we invite them to come and we can give them the survey and talk to them, and possibly give them some preliminary data, especially on that third tier, which is like the the customer mm -hmm. side of what we're what we're getting is feedback as from customers potentially. Absolutely, and I think that's um, I think it's definitely necessary to give that feedback and to have uh, those discussions. I don't know if you want to set a date now as part of the motion, or um, do you want to see when you get the survey out and sort of what the response looks like? Or rate looks like. So if we at least get the survey out by later next week, um, maybe the city can help us on the mailer. But I, I think we would get a lot of information back, probably. I've done surveys for people, including myself. It, it pretty much fizzles out after about two weeks when you first send mm -hmm. it out. So I do think we're gonna get a lot of, like from the text message and, and from posting it online, I'm thinking we post it to our Facebook page to get the citizen perspective easily. Yeah, we do absolutely. have followers on our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, we can always have, ask Miriam, you know, to post it on the economic development page. We can talk to Main Street, the Chamber, LEDC, Mile One. Yeah. Talk to folks and say, hey, can you, we're, we're doing this, would you mind sending this out to your either listserv or posting it on your mm -hmm. website or something like that? Yeah. Just to see what, you know, if we can solicit more feedback. If we do have a business improvement district date coming up, because I know this was a special meeting, mm -hmm. then we may not have to post a date and we can figure it out by the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. So I think the, the next meeting would be, I want to say June. Okay. I think that's the date. Works. We, we can decide by then. Okay. We'll have to survey out next week. You know, uh, Julian, just a little discussion here since I'm ADD, ADHD, okay. Um, if we could, some way or another, we had a summit, which was very successful, very informative. I mean, all the information that, that basically that group got, they got. And I'm just thinking if we could have somewhat of a small little summit, make it our own little gathering with, with a lot of our people downtown, our newer people that are here, and, and set something up for the summer. And, you know, just have like a mixer or something, just to give them a taste people that weren't there, that I know a lot of people that weren't there, just to give them a taste, just to keep on with the momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it has to keep on, it can't slow down. Can't, no slowing down. And I, I think that's what, a month and a half away, in my opinion? The idea is we would have some preliminary plan mm -hmm. to say, hey, we've gotten some survey results back in through that, this is what we're thinking on budgeting, having that presented that day. And then you have the IDA, you have the IDA report that shows how important this group is mm -hmm. and what this organization can do. Then we've got our survey, and then that leads into our plan. And, you know, maybe then we also have the plan and, you know, near final and say, here, sign a petition with it too. If you're, if you're, if you're in, if you're okay with how let's do it. And we'll just have, you know, 50 copies of it there and, you know, host it somewhere downtown and, you know, have people sign on the dotted line and, 
it's a great way to get the petition signed, you yeah. know? Yeah. But yes, that, that is part of the plan is that we do have it. Maybe some of it is not the right word, but another just general. A general um, mixer. We can yes, have a little mixer for downtown. Yes. You know, have it, you know, at, um, I know some guys that, that, that purchased uh, Hank's place. Maybe we can use that, or we can La Posada, or I mean, there's a lot of places, you know, mm -hmm. for for a hundred and some odd people, and just to have little hors d'oeuvres and drinks, and and just give them another a, another taste of your spiel, mm -hmm. but looking at them in the eyes. Okay, agree. Absolutely. Any further discussion? Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No opposition, the motion carries. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Is that a second? To adjourn. All right, a second. Uh, we are adjourned.